Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for stopping by today. We're bringing you another extension of Longwell Art in the process of commissions. Most people, either those that are having the artwork done or the artists themselves, tend to be afraid of commissions because there's a lot involved. It's actually, as all Zara Alter put it so succinctly many times while she was having her painting done, that it's a collaboration between the artist and the person that wants the work done. And it can be challenges for artists, especially with an instance like today where we'll be talking about with Rain Dow, the because of a dream. But before we get into in-depth and in talking about Rain's commission, let me go ahead and introduce my guests today. And we'll start off with Zara Altair, because we're going to go backwards alphabetically here. Hi, uh, everyone. <laughs> my name is Zara Altair, and um, I am a grateful recipient of a wonderful piece of art that Tim did for me. So, do you want me to show it now, quickly, briefly? And we can talk about you it. can if you'd like. Um, and it. we'll tell the story later. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here, Tim. Thanks. And next, we have Rain Dowell with us today, and we'll go over her commission in detail and She's done it before, so she's a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> At least she knows what she's up against, and especially <laughs> after watching Zara as well. How are you today, Rain? I'm really good. I'm really good. Thank you for having me, Tim, and thank you for for this opportunity. When it was when you first came out with this, um, with this opportunity of you know you wanting to do uh, art for commission, and it was funny because I had. You know, the, this I had had this dream, and I had the, and I thought that would be a that would be an amazing painting. That would be so beautiful. And when you put out the, you know, put out the offer saying to do a painting, I thought, I wonder if anybody has ever done something like this before because it's pretty different what you what you see in your own mind or what you, you know, it's not even like a well, I suppose it is a type of memory. So, but I really appreciate you having me here, Tim. I'm looking forward to it. And it's a pleasure to it's a pleasure to have you as well as along with Zara and we'll dive into it here now. If you want to, you folks can take notes and it'll kind of give you an idea to get comfortable if you decide to have myself or another artist and that may be closer to you do something special for you that you'll have a feel for it. You'll be able to do it if you're an artist looking at taking commissions. Go ahead and take some notes, and you'll have an idea of how to walk the prospective client through the process of having, in this case, a dream, but it also applies to memories turned into a work of fine art. Rain, we're going to start off, and you're going to tie up most of the attention today. Oh. Um, why don't you tell us about the dream you would like painted? <laughs> okay. Well, just to illustrate what Tim has to work with here, <laughs> this is this is a rendition <laughs> of what I drew for him, <laughs> and I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? Mm, pretty light. <laughs> let me try. It. Let me try this. Can you see? I tried to do it in black ink. Can you see that? No? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, it there's it's a stick drawing. <laughs> it's quite a bit of stick drawing. So I had to um, sort of explain um, and try to try to communicate as best I could with Tim sort of the feeling of the of the and Tim was asking me questions the whole time, and there are things you wouldn't think to relate to the person, um, because my this particular dream it, it occurred. Um, it was uh, during the day, so it was daylight hours, and one of the questions I remember Tim asking me was, "Where was the sun? Where was the sun? Where were the shadows?" And it took me a moment to think about it, and there there weren't any. 
it, there weren't any in the in the it was um, high noon I guess they would call it so there didn't appear to be any shadows in the dream at all and so did do you want me to explain it Tim or how do you just explain the dream part then we'll go over some of the questions again okay you don't have to try to remember all the questions I asked you okay okay all right so um, it was in a uh, it was during the summer there was no snow or anything like that so it was during the summer it was a, it was a, it was in a backyard it was very green rich lush grass and there was uh, you know trees it, it was groomed grass so it wasn't wild and and you know four feet tall or anything it was groomed grass and um, the people that one moment people were standing around and they seemed to be almost from um, you know the 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 twenties or the turn of the century, how they were dressed, type of thing. But then they were, um, then all of a sudden they were gone. And then the grass um, sort of gave way, and it was water. It was just, it was a lot of water. And the color of the water was um, like like the color of water in Greece. You know that really, really beautiful, clear, light bluish green color. It's just, it's just a very, very really nice color. That was the color of the water. It was fairly calm. The water was, you know, there there weren't there weren't really waves or anything like that. It was fairly calm water. And when I looked down, I was sort of standing on the edge of the grass and then it just sort of went into this body of, of water. And when I looked down there were um, white roses and they were um, the heads of the roses were about that big. They were just they were just massive, <laughs> just really big. And there was about um, I don't know. There was about you know five or six or seven or eight. There was a there was, it was like a bunch of them, and they were just about that far underneath the water. So they they were growing and in the water. And I could see their stalks um, going down um, from underneath them, and they were they were kind of waving in the water, you know, with the with the tide. So it was it was really quite pretty. And um, there were, um, well, then the next thing you know, I was on a raft, <laughs> I had a pole. <laughs> I was using the pole to push the type of raft and there were these rocks and I would say Tim actually the color of the rocks that you drew behind you that um, sort of caramely brown color um, that was the the color of these rocks so these rocks were coming up out of the water and they were um, not you know not the size of a house or anything like that about the size of you know a couple of desks or three desks put together and there was <clears throat> they were sort of these rocks were kind of around in a semicircle and they were all different shapes um, so they were different shapes and the way the rocks were sort of set up was you could kind of um, row up to them or, or and then you could get in and, and climb on them and sit on them and you know do do that type of thing. And I remember they felt really um, war like warm, not hot, but very warm to the touch. And <clears throat> so I was just sort of exploring these different rocks and going along in the raft. And the last one I came to, the shape of the rock, um, it was almost like a shape. Sh um, Shay's lounge chair where it goes where you can sit in and it goes down except at the very where your feet would be there was um, a heart but it but it was it was almost like it was um, cut out of the rock in a way there was an opening and it was a heart and that's where your feet would go through and there was an old dog an old hound dog that was sitting on this rock and um, yeah, I remember rowing up to that one, and um, 
just noticing the, the, the heart in the rock and thinking it was that was really neat and um, then noticing the um, the old dog and and petting the dog and then that was it then the dream was over so <laughs> that's what Tim had to go on that and my awful stick drive <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, and I listened as I did now because I picked up things this time that I didn't when we first discussed this. And this time I think she remembered some of the questions because one of the things I had to ask her originally was what kind of dog. Yeah. And this time she described it as an old hound dog. What kind of old hound dog? A beagle, a bloodhound? Like a like a bloodhound, yeah, yeah, okay. like a bloodhound. Okay. Yeah. And jowly. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing she mentioned was because she had trouble describing the rocks other than some kind of chair, whereas this time she was more specific. So she's obviously given this a lot more thought. So it'll be easier to personalize the painting even more so for her because she mentioned that they're kind of like almost like chase lounge on this particular one that caught her primary interest mm -hmm. whereas before I was thinking of the old style stone thrones and going how am I going to make that work you know <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that she didn't mention this time and I liked it she brought out is the seats to the rocks were warm. So that's an indication of light or how long a light has been shining on a given object. So it went along with her bringing out about my question, where was the light from? Okay, it was around noonish, but the, the sun was high in the sky at any rate. There weren't shadows cast, although the probability of reflection in the water was probably higher as a result of it. And the focus of the light on these rock formations was obviously on the top, facing down into the seating area. Um, you said the water was kind of a bluish green Yes, a light bluish green, like the water in uh, Greece. That's the closest color I've seen, like from pictures or movies or anything. That's the closest um, thing I can liken it to, because where I'm from, it's the waters typically azure, almost like your shirt, Tim. Yeah, kind of a cross between a. I would have considered this, of course, I'm showing a little more blue on the camera, but for me it would be kind of a, a light teal turquoise type green blue. Exactly. So exactly. And that's the impression that I got when you were describing the color of the water. Yeah. Um, you described the roses in more detail this time, so... She's really, since I talked to her originally about doing this and then mentioned about her coming on the show for this, she's obviously given a lot more thought into the painting, <laughs> concentrated more on the dream, um, how much of it is dream and how much of it is memory of some of the things that she's seen in life that she would like to see in it. doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But the elements that make this painting reigns have all been slowly added because she had time to consider some of the questions I asked her then and more definitively the dream. So when you're going to get a piece of artwork commissioned by an artist, don't feel that you have to give the artist the information as soon as you decide you want it done. Feel free, put out some feelers, get some inquiries, and then spend time thinking about these. The number of roses was vague last time. This time she specified the fact that she could see the limbs and the leaves this time. 
she described the roses. I was trying to picture, okay, how do I do roses that look right proportionally under the water? And she solved that problem in this description. They were huge. They were <laughs> large boat size or something, you know, was the impression she gives. That in, so a person could literally sit down inside one of the roses and be a very large person and still not fill the rose. So that will help the artist get you more of what you want. Oh, she did such a good description of this time, it's hard to find questions to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, for those that didn't, because the lighting was a little different this time, whatever, I did kind of a rough sketch of what I thought she might be want based on what I last talked with her about, which is what, January? Yeah. And um, so I drew something to kind of give you an idea. Let's see if I can get it far enough back here. There we go. As you can see, that's kind of what I was picturing because this would be the chair. See, now you notice here, the first one, the impression I got with the drawing is I was thinking that this thing laid up and your legs kind of propped up in the air a little bit. So this has to change now. That's been corrected for me. So that this will now come down kind of almost even with the water to yeah. have the heart for the dog right in here. Well, the dog was sitting on the seat, Tim. Oh, he's sitting was, on the seat. See now, Yeah, I, the dog, dog was sitting on the seat. And when I looked up and saw it, I thought, oh, I could sit there and stretch my feet out. And they would, if, if I stretch my feet out, they'll be sitting in the heart. And it was, um, there weren't, like, the rock formations were natural rock formations. They weren't... Carved. No, they weren't carved. They were very much natural formations that just, you know, um, a person could, you know... Uh, climb on and where they can find a foothold and do, you know, <laughs> do different okay. things. So That's like sort of the rocks in the painting behind me there, they were just yeah. weather created and it just so happened to make yes. what would sometimes be stumbled across if you were climbing those uh, exactly. comfortable seats. Exactly. And the, the and the heart wasn't, the heart wasn't like a perfect heart either. It was like kind of lopsidey and, you know, not completely, okay. you know, not completely, but if you looked at it, you would say, there's a heart in there, you know? But it wasn't a perfect heart, per se. No, it was like the rocks that you find at the beach that look sort of like a heart, but not yeah. exactly. But yeah, the one side yeah. might be too small or whatever, one yeah. be too thin or just different things like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. See, that all makes it that much more personal for Rain when the painting is finished. And this... The drawing I did, as the artist, you want to do because you can get this kind of feedback then because you said, okay, here is a prospective sketch based on what I understand to this point. <laughs> During a commission, as the person asking for the art, don't be intimidated or worried if the artist comes back to you and says, is this what you wanted? And it's not because they're trying to translate your idea into their brain and framework of the way they would see things. As an artist, don't ever feel intimidated or that, well, I just can't do this. I'm sorry. You'll have to find somebody else. You don't want to do that because they panned your drawing. You want that input, even if it's different from what you saw. Now you've given them a basis of definition so they can give you a clearer definition of what it is they're actually looking for. Mm -hmm. So you want to do these preparatory um, illustrations. They're, they're basically a rough draft sketch. They're not meant to be final. They're meant to be criticized and changed. And if you as an artist go looking at that to your customer during the commission, the customer looks at that drawing as this is a rough draft 
that can be easily changed because it's not set yet. Don't be nervous or uncomfortable about saying, hey, this is wrong. Because you're both working together, the artist and the consignee, to get that piece of art just the way you want it. Did you have any comment on that as an artist, Zara? Well, I was just thinking it's just a, it's so important to do that kind of interaction at the beginning because each person is trying to translate the other's vision. And that's, I think, for an artist, it's, um, it's, you, when you're doing your own work, it's so easy to be in your own space about how you do things and how you organize organize the space within your medium. And all of a sudden, someone else is coming along and saying, "This is what it is." And I, mean, I think for the work that uh, Tim and I did, it was a lot easier because we started out with a photograph a photographic image so it was easier to translate that but we still did a lot of work on it because there was there was essentially too much information in the photograph and so a lot of our conversation was about what the physical space was like and what and also what was important to me why this image had meaning for me so I think conversation is a really important part of the commission process. I know that um, commissions that I've done, either for you know for writing icons, or I did a series of poems for um, for a style show for a weaver. I did a poem for each one of her garments. Um, there is, there's just always a lot of collaboration, and uh, the artist needs to really listen and hear what that other person has in mind. Very, very good points. Um, a photograph is definitely easier to work with because with a photograph, as an artist, you take things away to create the work of art. As an artist, it's easy to become locked in to your own perception and viewpoint of things, especially if you're used to doing nothing but producing your own art without someone else's input other than the final judgment, the painting is complete, they like it or they don't. And you painted what you like, you painted what you want. But when you're doing that on the commission side, you're missing part of the connection that people-to-people -people connection, that human-to-human -human connection, that where you can bring their heart into the work of art you're putting your heart into. Um, did you have anything else to add, Rain, to the... Um well, I was thinking about it, and I thought, you know, because there are the different components with the... Um, roses in the water and then the different rocks and then that one rock with the um, you know the, the rough heart part in it and the old hound dog and I thought probably the the most important pieces of it to me were the um, the roses in the water and the hound dog on that one particular rock um, so for me, it would probably be more meaningful if just if those two pieces were in it, as opposed to it being kind of more landscapey with, you know, all the different rock formations and you know all that type of thing. Okay, but, so the concept drawing I gave you, and we'll go ahead and hold that up so that people can see it again, so she can look at it again. The basic concept art. What she's saying is, is the roses section that I have here. The correction of the way the chair is formed in the rock formation here, those are the focal points that if I would get anything else wrong in the painting, these two she wants to be as close to right as can be humanly expected. 
and that <laughs> and that's not unreasonable. You, as a person paying to have a piece of art specially made for you, you have the right to expect key elements to be included because that's why you're having it done because you want to convert something either a place memory in this case a dream or a photograph that engenders special memories when you have that frozen into a work of fine art that's a basically a special revealing of yourself and so you want it done right so it's not unreasonable to expect certain aspects of a work of art to get right. Zara and I, for example, there were a couple of times I told her, I sent her a picture, say, okay, this is where I'm at. It feels like I'm missing something from our conversation. And one of the items she pointed out was, is I hadn't made a piece of land in the background mm -hmm. prominent enough that you could tell that the Atlantic Ocean was on the other side of that harbor before the far distant background that I had in. So, you know, as the artist, don't be afraid to go back to them, even during the process of creating the painting. Hey, what do you think so far? What can I change or add? But make sure you do that at a stage where it's easy to do that change or addition. And you'll find that you and your person you're doing the commission for is going to reach an agreement and have a piece of art that they're really going to appreciate and be more than glad to hand down generations to come. Yeah. Ladies, I thank you very much for coming. We hit the end of the half hour, and it's been a real pleasure helping everyone today see both the commissioners and the painters side the artist side of things to look for ideas to use to make this commission process easier and let's start with rain this time rain where can we find you oh you can find me on G plus <laughs> R E Y N E D O W E L O. Okay. And Zara, where do we find you? Same thing. Uh, I'm on Google Plus as Zara Altair, Actation Now. And also, I have a website, Actation Now. And um, I'm pretty Google Plus oriented, so it all goes out from there. Tim, um, I. I like this series because I think you know it's, it's very encouraging for artists to consider another way of representing a vision. Uh, and commissions are that because of the, because of the collaboration and and because of that. I think for the artist and the person who is consigning the work. It is also important that you know each other's style enough to know if it's going to be a compatible uh, working situation. In other words, if, if we're a consignee, if an artist has a style that doesn't resonate with you, um, it's going to be very difficult for them to translate whatever it is that you want commissioned into something that will resonate with you. So I, that would be my one one thing I would want to say. I mean, I had seen enough of Tim, of his work, uh, of his attitude, of his, you know, walking through the painting process to know that it was something that was going to work, and it did. So um, it is definitely a collaboration, and the more communication on both sides, the better off the end result is going to be. And thank you again, Zara. That's right. Communication is the key, just like anything else in life. To get the painting right, don't be afraid to talk to one another. 
Thank you again, Rain. Thank you again, Zara. Thank you again, audience, for watching. And we'll talk to you next time on What the Art. Thank you, Terry.